Hello everyone, this is Dawn. Today is the feast day of St. Paul. It is January the 25th, 2018, and I was just guided to share this um, video with you today. So Paul is a complicated figure in terms of Christian history, and particularly in terms of how we in the modern era look at what is left of the record of his writings or what has been ascribed to him. And so I just want to um, share up front a little bit about my own um, complicated um, journey in terms of understanding the writings of Paul, because, you know, I remembered the spirit of Paul very much um, in my own journey. And um, there were some obvious contradictions that are in the um, record that is left, um, um, at least of the works that are attributed to Paul. And uh, there are some beautiful, amazing passages, um, and so I really encourage you um, to read those um, for yourself. And at the end of this video, I will share just one of many, um, and just sort of um, uh, was drawn to this particular passage um, for today, um, but I have shared in the past many um, many of the passages from uh, that were written by Saint Paul to include the beautiful love chapter in um, Corinthians and Romans. I would encourage some to where to start if you aren't familiar with the writings um, of Paul in the New Testament. I would suggest um, Romans um, chapter eight, chapter fourteen, fifteen, and toward the end also. Um, uh, the Corinthians passage, the love chapter. Um, I would also suggest Ephesians um, and um, well, really, you know, any of it. Um, but just keep in mind that um, the the biblical record um, that we have um, has been, you know, it's not. <laughs> although there are people who believe it's, you know, inherent and perfect as it is, um, it is a book written by human authors, many of whom were inspired by truth and by the Spirit of God. Um, yet, look, it has been two centuries, and uh, much happened um, before those letters even ended up in the right hands of the people who might know them as um, truth. And so. Um, but on this um, feast day of St. Paul, um, I just wanted to share a bit of my own perspective, um, and I'll share a, an excerpt from a video that's um, part of my um, um, series of videos I did on um, Mary Magdalene and um, her, her perspective, um, and it's just this, this particular portion of the video I will share is actually me um, speaking of my own soul memories um, and uh, as Dawn and here and now, and um, so I'll share a portion of that, um, and I haven't edited it yet, so I'm not sure what portion, and then um, I will um, share the passage from Philippians, which I recorded earlier. So um, as we're contemplating, you know, and, and thinking about and giving thanks for the life um, of Paul, those of us who um, come from a traditional um, Christian background in any case, um, can, you know, can appreciate um, like the vast contribution that he made. Um, but again, he himself was a complicated character, right? He was you know, essentially murdered those who followed Christ, the early Christians. He stood and hold the coat, held the coats um, at the stoning of Stephen. And he was a very, um, a very um, passionate person and very zealous in terms of his persecution efforts. Um, and then there was the road to Damascus and the conversion of St. Paul. And there were um, the moments that came afterward in his life, which were very beautiful. And what I know of the Apostle Paul and the spirit of Paul is that his heart was absolutely pure. And absolutely he was changed forever in a moment. And what I know of the legacy of his life is that that can happen for any one of us at any point in any time of our lives. And so for those of us who are on the path of sacred partnership and particularly divine feminine who have many of us been um, awake, um, are aware of our um, sacred mission here of who we are and why we have come here um, and who we have come to be, those of us who have been aware of that for quite some time, it can be, um, it can indeed feel um, like a burden. Um, and yet, there is 
the choice in every moment to set our eyes on the prize and to remember um, to um, remember who we are in Christ in the light of God and and in the made in the image of God and here for a very specific and important purpose and so this is just a short message to say um, you know in the spirit of um, Jesus and in the spirit of Paul to keep the faith and to continue to persevere and to know that you are held secure that you're the faith your faith is your security and your trust in life and in God's goodness and in the light of Christ to guide you is your security so um, hope this is encouraging to someone out there and um, just invite you to spend a moment today just to um, really reflect on the life of Paul. Thanks so much. I don't know. Um, I don't know, but I suspect that on the road to Damascus, and I do believe that there was an event on the road to Damascus for Saul, who then became Paul. I suspect that it was indeed the Spirit of Jesus <laughs> that chose Paul. I just, I feel very much somehow that something is being completed through time. Not just through me and my beloved, but through many of us who have come here to be a part of the restoration of the whole of humanity and nothing short of that. And to return to God and to help all people return to the love that is God and God who is love and our hearts and souls who are of God, who are love. We have come to be life, <laughs> to have life and have it to the full. And the way we do that is by being life, <laughs> by being the wholeness of who we are. I think whatever's happening here, I know it's a play of light. It's all beautiful. It's radiant. But it is all of the players allowing ourselves to be swept up in the dance of this life. And it is beautiful. Paul writes in the book of Philippians, chapter 1, beginning uh, with verse 3, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, but not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. 
Yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that though your prayers, through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Christ, Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. So that was Paul speaking in Philippians chapter 1, and I just wanted to share something of uh, his words today on um, the feast day for St. Paul, January 25th. Much love.